Hey, when you're working with lengths, there's one very important thing, and that is if, uh, like this uh, shaft here, it has a center right there. Now, if that center does not line up with your tailstock, under no circumstances force the part over with the tail center. Make it run true, because if you're pulling it over with the uh, tail center, your part's going to be machined with stress in it, and it may not be a very good part. And it could be bad for your uh, headstock bearings if they're plain bearings and a light weight. So you, you don't want any bind, something like this rotating. You know, you don't want to pull it true with either a steady rest or your tail center. You want to, if you have some extended, you want to you want dial it in, just like I did there. Okay, we'll go over to the other way. I got something happening there. Okay, so this is running true. It's supported here by this uh, special chuck, but you can use a steady rest, or you could even put a, a, a bushing and a drill chuck and hold it that way. Sizing the bushing, of course. Okay, so there's this run out here. Just a little more in two, two thousands. So we got to take care of take care of that. And what that run and there uh, seems to be kind of a high bar. There's a bump. And what happens is these brushes. These are oh, like graphite, carbon, whatever they are. And see how it's shaped. Got a little bit of radius on the face, and it fits on here and it travels like this so the outer and there's just a light spring pushing the brush against the commutator so when this commutator is out around or it's got a raised bar you see it it's in these segments and these can raise up and uh, and this is a generator but uh, uh, DC motors are the same, so this could be a motor. So what happened with this being out around, it caused the brush to vibrate. And it's called it dancing, because it's not round. It's not true with uh, the bearings that it's rotating on. So this, this dance is like that, and I'll show you what happened. It actually work hardened the copper wire, and it, I, I was just looking at this. These wires are, re, are quite robust, and it just popped off. So this was ready to fail, and it, and this generator was internally losing voltage and amperage, is losing power internally, kind of like a hydraulic pump getting weak by internal leakage. Okay, <laughs> just trying to uh, make some kind of comparisons. So I'm going to have to get a new set of brushes for this and maybe some field coats, I don't know. They just kind of look funky, but I'll, I'll check them out. So what I'm going to do now is true that up. Get that error out of there. And there's different ways to do that. And the most common way is to cut these. And it's only two thousandths out, so you'd have to take a really sharp tool and um, cut it. And you know, uh, Mel brought up about the alloys in these, and I believe these small units like this are 
more pure copper and uh, like heavier uh, like a five horsepower DC motor or something like that. It just kind of seems like the commentators on them are a little harder, a little different color. So there's a, um, a spot between the bars here. And when you cut it, it's going to smear that soft copper over that very narrow gap there. Then you have to do what's called undercut the commutator and have little saw wheels and things like that. But you don't have to do that. Okay. So what we have is a commutator. Is what they're called slip ring and commutator dressing stones. And here's a polish end here. They come in different threads. This is called a duplex stone. And what I've done is I've sawed pieces out of this over the years. And I would glue them to sticks and shape them so I could get inside uh, motors and generators. Because with this, you apply you can apply this to a running motor and it's kind of uh these aren't real common i think they're kind of starting to get a little bit more known and they're like a gr uh, grinding stone except for they're very soft and uh um they, uh, some of these, I, I, I'm told, they have different uh, uh, consistencies of these. It's, uh, it's a mixture of uh, flint and cornmeal. And you can see it's very soft, and I just, you know, at one time, I held it against the commutator, and it, and it forms real quickly. So... What I'm going to do, and you, uh, since you can put these uh, in running motors, um, I'm going to start this lathe up and run it at full speed, 1127 RPM, and I'm going to dress that commutator with this. I'll probably, uh, Just use the polish end because it's out so slow that I don't know. I might touch it with uh, the finish end here. But it doesn't need the coarse. You can, um, oh, where'd that go? No, oh, they got out some. They, they, these get really coarse and you can uh, repair really chewed up commentators. Okay, I'll get the camera set up. Uh, and uh, where you can see the action of this and we'll get things running.
Okay, let's have a look. You can see that the copper has not smeared over the slots here. So this using this method, it does not have to be undercut. Okay, but you want to look over it and just take a little like a pocket knife and kick any dust that's out that's in there. Okay, let's give it a check with the dial indicator and see if we corrected it. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> there it is. Okay. Now, I have never, ever seen anybody do this with an automotive generator. Never. But maybe, maybe people have. This is an industrial thing. Oh, let's see if we can get this up here and get that. You know, this, uh, it's not real hard to see this indicator, I think, most of the time in the camera. <sighs> it's kind of hard to turn this thing over. <sighs> I have reduced it to one half of a thousandth. Ah, at most, it's one half of a thousandth. That is good enough. So it went from about two and a half thousandths run out to one half thousandths with uh, these uh, slip ring and commutator dressing stones. And I'll put the manufacturer's name on, uh, on the description of the video. Okay, that's a done deal. Now there's one more thing to do to this, and uh, that varies from norm, and I'll get on it.